Hi friends, today I'm going to show you the five exercises that I do every single week as a physical therapist and a person with low bone density. Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa, I'm a physical therapist, I'm the creator of Brick House Bones, and I'm a specialist in osteoporosis and bone health exercise. And as a person with low bone density, I put the research in not only to help my clients, but to help myself. So today I'll share with you the five exercises that I make sure I incorporate in some manner every single week at varying loads and intensities, but you will know them by the end of the video also. So number one is I will always do a squat. So a squat can look like holding weights at my side, working somewhere between four and five repetitions if I'm going really heavy, or 15 or so repetitions if I'm modifying with lighter weights. I can also put the weights up on my chest and move like this, making sure to keep my heart lifted, chin tucked, hips hinging back and down. Lots of modifications for squats. I do many goblet squats in my programs and classes because this helps turn on the muscles in the spine, which is also really protective if we have osteoporosis. So squats are exercise number one. Number two is a press, some sort of pressing motion. I like to do versions of a shoulder press. So coming into the power position with the wrist on top of the elbow, the hands in front of the shoulders and the elbows in not elbows out, not elbows out, elbows in. So everything's in front of the shoulders, core is engaged. We're doing a full press overhead. Getting that line of force straight down through our body and through our skeleton, making sure that we're not leaning back in the process. Now, of course, when I work with clients, we make sure people have adequate range of motion in their shoulders so they're, we're not doing a press out here, but truly a press overhead. And whether we're using dumbbells or even just a stick or a bar or a barbell, like in the Lift More trial, there's lots of variations and styles and ways to work that using both arms or a single arm at a time, which adds complexity for core stabilization while we do it. So I include varieties of these in all of my exercise videos. So number two is a shoulder press or a pressing motion. So we have a squat, we have a press, and we're gonna go to a plank. I always make sure every week that I am practicing a plank of some form. So a full plank, chin tucked, pushing the floor away. We can do modified plank on our knees. We can do a hover plank on our toes and hands. We can do forearm planks either on our knees or on our toes, making sure that we have a nice straight line. And we can do side planks. So all the variations of planks is something I include every single week in my Strong Bones workout. Squat, press, plank, next we pull. So pulling is a balanced movement that goes with a press. If we're doing a press, we also need to do a pull. So we're balancing the strengthening between the front and the back body. I'm very conscientious about all of my programming whether it's a beginner's program or an advanced, all of them, that we balance the strengthening between the front of the body and the back of the body. So a pull can look like a supported row. Using the muscles that pull the weight closer to the body. It can also be done with bands or with a cable machine. You can also, when we're stronger, do them unsupported. So we get the added benefit of strengthening the spinal extensors, hips, and hamstrings also. They're working in a more isometric fashion where we're working in a concentric fashion doing our alternating rows 
in an unsupported manner. So squat, press, plank, pull. There's four. What's number five? Do you have any guesses? Well, if you guess deadlift or hinge, you would be correct. So I always incorporate some type of a hinge deadlift exercise in my weekly routines. Hips hinging back, shoulders coming forward, knees staying on top of the ankles, not leaning back. Nice straight spine with the chin tucked. We can do these double leg versions. We'll do also barbell or hex bar versions. And what I really love are these kickstand versions where we get to isolate single leg activities. Now there's a sixth one, but it didn't include in this video and that is jumping. Now I make sure I get impact and jumps every single week because I know I've built up the base of strength to be able to do jumps and impacts, but that's not right for everyone. And what I want you to know is impact exercise is really helpful for bone density, but we shouldn't start there. We should start with building the basics of strength. So just so you know, I do include all of this type of training in my program and I can scale it down to a beginner level in my beginner's collection. I also offer four by four workouts, four exercises, four rounds, just like this in different forms that are specific for building bone density. And those are moderate intensity, do a little bit more complex sometimes, and they lead on to my build program where we do full body balance strengthening. So like video one and two, one is more pull and push focused. The other is gonna be more hinge and lift. So we balance out those two movements between video one and video two, video three and four. They progress up through eight videos for a full body complete bone health exercise for those trying to preserve their bone density and increase it. So if this was helpful and valuable, if you appreciate understanding these exercises, or if you want a little more nuance to understand how you can scale them, we'll link a video below that talks about the most important exercises for bone density and how you can modify it to fit your level of ability. Thanks for watching.